Now let's see the mechanism of the respiration. In that we are going to see first the mechanism of the inspiration. In case of the inspiration, all three diameters of the thoracic cavity increases and these are the increase in the anteroposterior diameter, increase in the transverse diameter and increase in the vertical diameter. So with the inspiration, the three diameters are going to increase. Let's see how the all the three diameters are going to increase one by one. When we see the increasing anteroposterior diameter, this anteroposterior diameter, this is somewhat present like this, and this anteroposterior diameter of the thoracic cavity, it is going to be increased by the intercostal muscles by elevating the ribs. And we already know that external intercostal muscles of one side and the internal intercostal muscle of the opposite side they're having the same direction of the fibers and when these muscles are get contract they will lead to the elevation of the rib and this elevation of the rib by the intercostal muscles it will lead to the increase into the anteroposterior diameter of the thoracic cavity this anteroposterior diameter increases around one axis and that axis it is nearly oblique in nature and this oblique axis passes like this and this axis it passes through the costo transverse joint as well as the costo vertebral joint and it passes obliquely and it passes through the opposite sided costo chondral joint so around this oblique axis the anteroposterior diameter of the thoracic cavity increases in case of inspiration. Now how this anteroposterior diameter is going to increase? Let's see in a complete thoracic cavity figure. So this is the bony framework of the thoracic cavity. Here in this figure we can see this. This is the manubrium sterni and this one is the first rib. So first rib and the manubrium sterni they are mostly rigid and they do not move during the quiet breathing or we can say quiet inspiration but they move during the forceful inspiration while when we see this second to sixth rib this rib number two rib number three rib number four five and six ribs here the direction of the costal cartilage it is the downward and forward and that's why the when the elevation of these ribs are there, it will lead to the body of the sternum moves forward. And this forward moving of the body of the sternum, it will lead to the increase into the cavity of the thorax. And this increased space into the thoracic cavity will lead to the inspiration. Well, when we see the lower ribs, these are rib number 7 to 10, 7, 8, 9 and 10 the direction of the costal cartilage they are forward and upward and medially and that's why when the elevation of the ribs are there to the 7th to 10th rib it will lead to the backward movement of the body of the sternum and this forward movement by the 2nd to 6th rib and the backward movement by the 7th to 10th rib of the body of the sternum it will lead to the formation of the sternal angle so when we see in case of inspiration the upward movement of the rib will lead to the forward movement of the body of the sternum and the elastic recoil of the thorax will lead to the backward movement of the body of the sternum and this will lead to the pump handle movement so here in this figure this is the sternum and here this is the vertebral column and here this is the rib so when the upward movement of the rib is there it will lead to the forward movement of the sternum and this will lead to increase in the anteroposterior diameter of the thoracic cavity while when the elastic recoil is there and it will lead to the backward movement of the body of the sternum and this will lead to the decrease in the 
entero posterior diameter of the thoracic cavity so we can correlate this movement of the body of the sternum to and fro with the pump handle movement so increase in the entero posterior diameter it is concerned with the pump handle movement now let's see the increase into the transverse diameter of the thoracic wall when the inspiration occur it will lead to the increase of the transverse diameter of the thoracic wall also and this transverse diameter it is going to increase by the two means one is by the active method and one is by the passive method when we see the active method this transverse diameter is going to increase by the 7th to 10th ribs and when the elevation of the 7th to 10th ribs is there because of the direction of the costal cartilage this ribs will move the body of the sternum backward but along with that it will increases the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity and increase in this transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity will lead to the inspiration and the movement of this 7th to 10th rib to increase the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity it is just like that of the bucket when we handle the bucket it will lead to increase into the transverse diameter of the bucket so here you can easily appreciate this thing when we hold the bucket from here and lift it upward it will increases the transverse diameter of the bucket so this movement of the 7 to 10th rib by active increase in the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity it is called as the bucket handle movement and this bucket handle movement it is going to occur at the entero posterior axis and this entero posterior axis it is going to pass somewhere here so this axis from where the transverse diameter increases it passes through the costovertebral joint posteriorly and anteriorly it passes through the costosternal joint so this entero posterior axis which gives access to the increase into the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity when we talk about the passive increase in the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity this passive increase in the transverse diameter it occurs with the elevation of the second to sixth rib when this second to sixth rib are going to elevate it will not only Uh, increases the entero posterior diameter but because of the obliquity of the rib this will also increase the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity so this passive increase by the second to sixth rib it will also increase the transverse diameter of the thoracic cavity now let's see the increase in the vertical diameter will lead to the inspiration this vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity it increases by the contraction of one large muscle present between the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity and that is the diaphragm muscle when the contraction of this diaphragm muscle is there it will lead to the descent of the diaphragm and this descent of the diaphragm will lead to the displacement of the abdominal viscera to the downward side and this will lead to the bulging of the abdominal wall and with this the thoracic cavity volume that is increasing and with the increase in the vertical diameter here the air can suck inside the thoracic cavity and this will lead to the inspiration so the vertical diameter it is exclusively increased by the contraction of the diaphragm muscle and this kind of the movement of the diaphragm that is called as a piston movement now after completion of the inspiration we can uh, see that the because of the elastic recoil of the lung tissue as well as the thoracic cavity the passive expiration occurs and along with the passive expiration if the forceful expiration is needed then the muscles of the expiration comes into action we have already learned one more interesting thing to add in this lecture is that 
the increase in the 1 cm diameter of the thoracic cavity it will gives rise to around 200 ml inflow of the air into the lungs so for the quick revision let's see this image the respiratory movements it occurs around the three terms and these are the pump handle movement bucket handle movement and the piston movement the pump handle movement it it is increase in the entero posterior diameter of the thoracic cavity and it occurs around the oblique axis while it is mainly occur by the second to sixth ribs while the bucket handle movement it is increase in the transverse diameter and it occurs around the entero posterior axis and it mainly occurs at the 7th to 10th ribs while the piston movement it is increase in the vertical diameter and it is mainly by the diaphragm muscle so this is all about the respiratory movements with their mechanism hope you understand well thanks for watching